Happy New Year, everybody. End of one year, beginning of the next. Sort of traditional to review the top stories, right? So let's do that in today's update. The top five geological stories of Yellowstone National Park for 2024. Here we go. Number five, is Yellowstone heating up or cooling down? There were some interesting changes in 2024. We had abyss pool in West Thumb Geyser Basin. That increase in temperature got a little bit more blue. Economic geyser near Old Faithful for erupted for the first time in 25 years. And there was a new feature that formed between Roaring Mountain and Norris Geyser Basin, just north of Nymph Lake, put a great big steam plume into the sky. This is kind of Yellowstone being Yellowstone. It does this all the time. When we look at overall changes, wasn't heating up or cooling down. We know this from looking at river chemistry. That tells us something about the hydrothermal input to the river system. We can also look at satellite data of the entire region. Thermal output from satellites tells us that it really hasn't changed. So not really heating up or cooling down, but always interesting changes in Yellowstone. Number four, speaking of cooling off, Steamboat Geyser. Now this is the tallest geyser in the world, Norris Geyser Basin, and when it erupts, it puts on a show. It can sometimes go years, even decades, without erupting. But in 2018, it sprang to life and began erupting repeatedly. And in fact, in 2019 and 2020, each year it erupted 48 times. Since then, it's been in a bit of decline. And this past year, 2024, just six eruptions. So it may be that Steamboat is going back to sleep. Number three, seismicity and ground deformation. What's that been doing? It's been pretty remarkably unremarkable. Over the course of 2024, we located about 1,150 earthquakes in the Yellowstone region. This is sort of on the low end for the region. Usually we see maybe 1,500 to 2,500 earthquakes. Sometimes it can be well over 3,000. Other times though, it's around 1,000 or so events a year. This doesn't mean it's the calm before the storm or we're overdue or something like that. It's just the way Yellowstone works. It was a quiet year. The same is true of ground deformation. Since 2015, Yellowstone caldera has been subsiding. It's interrupted in the summer months due to some changes in groundwater conditions and snow melt. But overall, there's been a subsidence of about an inch or so per year. That didn't change in 2014 either. So ground deformation has been pretty steady for about the past decade or so. Number two, the first kaboom. This happened on April 15th in the Norris Geyser Basin, and it was the first instrumentally recorded hydrothermal explosion in the history of Yellowstone National Park. Now, the park was closed at the time, so even though this only occurred about 150 feet from a boardwalk, no one saw it, but we heard it. A new monitoring sensor was installed in 2023 in Norris Geyser Basin. It included some acoustic equipment that was able to detect the explosion based on the sound it made and actually how the sound managed to shake the ground. So we used this to pinpoint the location of that event, and sure enough, there's a crater right where the event originated from. So, the first hydrothermal explosion detected solely by instruments in Yellowstone's history. Well, that brings us to number one. You know what it's gonna be, the big kaboom. July 23rd, Biscuit Basin, when Black Diamond Pool experienced the best observed hydrothermal explosion in the history of Yellowstone National Park. Now, this explosion was driven by water flashing to steam in the shallow subsurface. And we know this because all the rocks that came out, gravels and sandstones, glacier material, exist only in the upper 100 or 200 feet below the surface. The explosion was initially directed away from the boardwalk, which gave people time to get away. So fortunately, there were no injuries. This sort of hydrothermal activity is pretty common in Yellowstone. There are explosions every year somewhere in the park, sometimes in winter, often in the back country where they're not observed. So we need to do a better job monitoring this sort of activity. That was the purpose of the installation of the new equipment at Norris, and we're gonna be expanding this network in 2025 to the Biscuit Basin area. Well, there you have it, the top five geological stories in Yellowstone National Park for 2024. Now let's talk about geyser activity, deformation, and seismicity that occurred during the month of December. It was another quiet month in the Yellowstone region in terms of earthquakes. 2024 ended with just 82 earthquakes located by the University of Utah during the month of December. The largest was a magnitude 2.7 event that was in the southwest part of the park, south of Old Faithful. That occurred in the middle of December. Earthquake activities was distributed throughout the region, and there were no swarms during the month. Turning now to ground deformation, this is vertical deformation at the Lake GPS site. It's on the Sour Creek Caldera on the east side of Yellowstone National Park. Each one of these blue dots is one day worth of data. The entire plot spans the past two years 
Downward trends indicate subsidence, and upward trends indicate uplift. This trend of overall subsidence has been going on since 2015. We're getting about three centimeters or so, an inch or a little bit more than that per year of subsidence. It's interrupted in the summer months by this little bit of uplift that you see just for a few months every summer. That's caused by changes in groundwater conditions and snowmelt conditions. That ended in late September this past year, and we have seen a small amount of subsidence of the caldera ever since. Finally now, looking at the world's tallest geyser, Steamboat Geyser, we did not have any major eruptions during the month of December, so there were six overall during 2024. That's the least number of major eruptions since the current period of activity began in 2018. Now this is temperature in the geyser's outflow channel. Things are right about freezing, no minor activity, and then in the middle of the month, we started getting more and more minor activity. That are these temperature variations you see in the plot. So the fact that minor activity seems to be picking up might mean that we're in for another major eruption in the first few weeks of 2025. Well, that's the update for December of 2024 and all of 2024. Hope you had a great year. Hope you will have an even better 2025. From the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, stay safe, stay healthy, and Happy New Year. Bye-bye.